In some breaking news, the CDC has provided new updated guidance at last that may allow crews to return sooner than we think. And we also look at the three reasons why the CDC has been so hard on crews. Well, well ahoy, ahoy there, cruisers. We're Ben and David. Before we begin, please make sure you subscribe to our channel. We are so close to our next milestone, so please support us by clicking subscribe. So this breaking news, it's really unexpected and just coming in now. In a leaked document to USA Today, the CDC is setting out brand new rules for cruise lines to resume sailing in the USA. The letter comes from the head of the maritime unit for the CDC's COVID-19 response and it was sent to USA Today. It said that cruising will never be a zero risk activity and that the goal of the conditional sail order phased approach is to resume passenger operations in a way that mitigates the risk of COVID-19 transmissions on board cruise ships and across port communities. Well, they've set out some guidelines that cruising could return by midsummer. This is such fantastic news. So should we take a look at some of those changes then? So first up, test voyages will no longer be a requirement if 98% of crew members and 95% of passengers are fully vaccinated. If cruise lines still want to do simulated test voyages, they no longer have to wait 60 days for the CDC to review their application. They only now have to wait five days. I mean, 60 days, that was a ridiculous yeah. amount of time in the first place. We always said that was ridiculous. So that's now down to five days. So there's obviously something changed here where they're working a lot quicker. It's really fantastic. The CDC will also review its testing and quarantine requirements for passengers and crew on sailings with paying passengers. So too as a line with their own current guidance for fully vaccinated people. So if you already knew that in the USA, if you're fully vaccinated, you can basically travel anywhere in the USA now. So hopefully that is aligned with crews, which is what we think will happen. The new rules will also allow cruise lines to make agreements with more than one port at a time. Previously, the CDC was making each cruise line have a separate agreement with every single port that they stopped in. Obviously, this was really hard work. Now they can just work with all of the ports that they work with and come up with one single agreement that they all agree with. It's so much easier for the cruise lines. And finally, the CDC has offered clarified and updated guidance with regards to quarantine guidelines for passengers who have been or may have been exposed to or contracted COVID-19. The cited example says that local passengers may be allowed to drive home while passengers who have traveled to a cruise port may quarantine in a hotel. I mean, that's great news. It makes it so much easier for you or me if we, ha if we did unfortunately come down with COVID. What do you think? It's a long time coming. But why have the CDC taken so long to do this when every other industry has been up and running for months now? They've really dragged their feet. But well, we've put together the three reasons why we think that the CDC may be doing this. The first reason is that the cruise industry has been wrongly blamed for the start of the pandemic. There was so much bad reporting about the first cases of COVID on board the Diamond Princess way back at the beginning of the pandemic. Immediately, the media blamed the cruise lines and the cruise ships for being the cause. And this just isn't true on the whole part. The Japanese government made huge errors and mistakes when it came to the handling of the Diamond Princess. Passengers were basically just left on board, proper procedures were not followed, and the virus was just left to spread. Passengers went untreated and it was a complete mess. Cruise was portrayed as the villain in all of the news stories. If it had been dealt with correctly, the spread and death toll might have been much lower. But you've got to remember, in all fairness, at this point, nobody knew anything about the virus. It had just started. We didn't really know how it spread or how it attacked the body or who was at risk really. It was just a really unfortunate event. According to the media, you'd think that the cruise lines caused COVID, but despite the fact that cruises haven't sailed for almost a year and a half, COVID is still breaking out everywhere, so they can't be to blame for the millions of deaths. And as you know, Princess got caught up in another media storm, again with the Ruby Princess in Australia. But again, this was due to bad government decisions with all passengers being allowed to disembark in Australia with zero checks or any type of quarantine. This is after the captain and the onboard doctor had reported the virus on board, but the government allowed people to get off, causing the virus to be much much 
worse. In the following months after this, cruise ships were in the news every single day, when the massive majority of people were being infected on land. As a result of COVID and outbreaks on board cruise ships, it's an estimated that around 100 people died in total worldwide. Just to give you some context, almost 600,000 people have died in the USA, but cruise is getting the blame. And 3.14 million people died worldwide. It just shows you the context. It doesn't mean that those 100 lives don't matter. We are so, so very sorry that they passed away. But in context with 100 lives compared to 3.14 million lives, it just goes to show you that cruise was not the problem. How many people have died as a result of flying, staying in resorts, or visiting a theme park? We'll never know because there's simply no reporting. But several studies on flights have shown significant spread on board. But this hasn't been to the media's or the CDC's interest, so they're not reporting it. On one Vietnam Airlines flight from London to Hanoi in Vietnam, one positive person caused the virus to spread to at least another 15 people around them. This is in business class where seats are more spread out compared to economy. Media outlets seem to take joy with reporting cruise ships being turned away from ports. But most of these ships didn't even have any cases on board, but their reports fueled the fire. Cruise ships have been called petri dishes and places where illnesses were rife. But it just isn't true. When you think of norovirus, you think of cruise ships. That's because that's what the media has been feeding us all of these years. But again, it isn't true. You're actually much, much more likely to get norovirus on land than on a cruise ship. Even the CDC website says this. Cruise ships are basically the only industry that have to report illness on board, so of course it will look much worse than it is. And journalists love to jump on the very inaccurate Petri dish metaphor. That really, really annoys me, that word. You will not believe, guys, how many times we get called that on our channel, that cruise ships are Petri dishes. This all comes from the media and it simply isn't true. Just over 100 deaths on cruise ships compared to 3.14 million worldwide. Just keep that into mind. And just to highlight the media's obsession with blaming crews for spreading illnesses, when we were on our sea dream trip, we were contacted by almost hundreds of different agencies. And even today, we still get inquiries about that cruise. That was nearly six months ago. Nobody died, nobody had severe illness, everybody was fine, but every single news agency in the world were jumping on us. We were getting calls, emails, it's crazy. And it just goes to show that obsession. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an interactive online learning community where you can take classes on a whole host of different topics, including photography, video, art, crafts, and much more. It's for creative and curious people who want to learn new things. We have been using Skillshare to help with our photography skills, and we have seen such an improvement since taking classes like iPhone photography, how to take pro photos on your iPhone by Dale McManus. And we think it's perfect for you too. Just think, the next time you cruise again, you could be taking stunning photos that really impress your friends and family. You don't need any fancy equipment or expensive cameras, just a phone that takes photos. And what's best, Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and a class project so you can get really hands-on. And they have classes that will fit into your schedule and skill level. And because we're working with Skillshare, the first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description section below, we'll get a free trial of premium membership and new classes are being added all of the time. After the trial, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Cheap as chips. Now back to the show. Number two, cruise lines not being US companies or paying any tax. Well, this is a big one because cruise lines are based offshore and not in the USA. They have not received the same treatment as if they were a company based in the USA. But cruise lines are still huge business for the USA. There's this misconception that cruise lines pay no tax or contribute anything to the US economy, but that isn't true and doesn't fit in with this narrative that the media are trying to tell us. In 2019, in addition to the taxes it paid to the US federal government, Carnival Corporation paid $600 million in port taxes and fees directly to port cities in the United States. Lots of countries such as Bermuda and Panama, where many of the ships are based, have a tax agreement with the US, so they don't pay federal taxes in the US. But in return, the USA is able to do business with those companies in those countries without being taxed as well. So it benefits both the cruise industry and the USA. They're both doing the same thing. 
Cruise lines pay massive docking and passenger fees. On a mid-side ship carrying around 3,000 passengers, this amounts to around $45,000 per port call. That is such a huge amount of money. Plus, cruise lines are subject to state income taxes, as well as various other taxes, such as a 33% tax on all gambling whilst sailing in Alaskan waters. Plus, you need to remember, there's more than 420,000 US-based employees or people associated with cruise in the USA, and they all pay federal and state income taxes. This is a huge amount of money. Cruise is worth billions to the US economy, so blocking it makes no sense at all. And when it came to bailouts last year, the cruise industry never asked for any type of bailout or assistance, as the media incorrectly reported. The Cruise Lines International Association, commonly known as CLIA, the organisation that represents passenger cruise lines, said that none of the companies requested any federal assistance. But companies such as Amazon, Netflix and IBM, who avoid paying federal tax, did get government bailouts. And finally, number three, the CDC just doesn't like cruise. We think this one's obvious. There is definitely some type of bias of the cruise industry. The latest lawsuit has just fallen on its face when senators like Patty Murray said, cruise ships require specific focus and protocols in place to prevent future outbreaks. Well, duh, that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, are you kidding us? That's exactly what the cruise industry has been spending millions of dollars on over the last year, coming up with the healthy sail panel, hundreds of different protocols to keep people safe. And anti-cruisers will say, it's too dangerous, it's for your safety, but that's now impossible to justify with everything else opening up as normal. It's just not fair treatment. It's very clear that every story needs a villain, and the villain is Cruise. The CDC are happily using the industry as a scapegoat. And to the naysayers who say, well, they don't control flights, they can give advice to tell people not to go to these places. They can give advice not to fly. They might not be able to shut it down, but they're not doing this. It makes no sense. And it makes us so angry for all of the lovely crew who are affected, all of the people, the millions of people around the world who are affected. This is their livelihood. This is their job. This is our job and it really affects us. So we're really on your side in the USA. We want Cruise to come back safely, but as soon as possible, along with everything else. Absolutely. I mean, what other form of vacation can you guarantee that everybody on board or within that vacation area are vaccinated? There isn't one. Theme parks, people are coming and going. Hotels, people coming and going as well. Cruise can guarantee that everybody's vaccinated and on top of that, they can even test the vaccinated people and create a safe bubble for a period of time. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed, but please do hit that subscribe button and give us a like as well if you enjoyed the video. It really helps us out. And we've got eight cruises this summer and we want to take you along. And thank you so much to all of our patrons. It's been your support that has helped us this past year and helped us with these cruises coming up this summer. A big thank you to our cruise captain of the week, which is Air. So ahoy, ahoy there, Air. That's it till next time. Happy, Happy cruising. cruising.